Good morning, everybody. Hey, y'all. Good morning and welcome to Life Class by Graced for Today. Life Class, live in faith every day. Live in faith, win every day. You got it now? Can y'all hear me now? Can y'all hear me now? Can y'all hear me now? That was my fault. Can you hear me now, Sister Janet? I'll give you a few moments to respond to me. All right. Can y'all hear me? Oh, great. That was a uh, user error. <laughs> Good morning. God bless everybody. We're so glad to be here. And um, life class is the third Saturday of each month. And um, today I want to continue talking about Samson just a little bit, but we're going to take a little turn and, um, and talk about Samson. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Thank you for sharing as soon as you come on. And... Um, this is life class. We're going to just study a little bit about Delilah. Let's see. I've got notes over here too. I kind of have things kind of a bunch of places. Oh, maybe I put them all in one spot. All right. Let's see where we are. So today we're going to look at Judges chapter 16. Good morning. We're going to look at Judges chapter 16 and uh, verses 5 through when we get till my time is up. That's the best thing to do because I don't know. Um, so today our subject is let's talk about Delilah. Let's talk about Delilah. Delilah. That extraordinary woman. I know y'all may not think of her as extraordinary, but Delilah was an extraordinary woman. And um, let's just give a definition for her name. Let's start with that. Thank you so much, Sister Patricia. I need all the blessings I can get, sis. The, the, the word, the name Delilah means feeble. But not necessarily, and this is what it also uh, refers to, the Philistine mistress of Samson who betrayed the secret of his great strength by cut and by cutting his hair, and then it uses this word, Hey, Brenda Harper, then enfeebled him, enfeebled him and delivered him to the Philistines. So let's look at this a little bit. Delilah enfeebled, weakened Samson. Now, Delilah means feeble, but Delilah wasn't weak in the sense that we think of feeble people. Let's look at this. She was, uh, she wasn't feeble or weak in that sense. She was powerful in another sense. She was only weak or feeble in the sense that she was in a profession that did not give her the esteem and the applaud of men until those men saw uh, that Samson fancied her. Samson wanted her. Let's look at this. And, and I want to talk about Delilah because we don't want to be Delilah. We don't want to be Delilah. We don't want to be. And we want to see where people need, to me, this is me, see where people need prayer and pray them out of that. Look, the scripture says in Proverbs 6, 26, it says, for by means of a whorish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread. You know this scripture is still true, right? Y'all do know that. Y'all do know that. Hey there, Veronica. Um, we, we do know this scripture is still true. By means of a whorish woman, a woman who will weaken you, a woman who will cause you to lose your power, a woman who will use your vulnerability against you. By means of a whorish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread. He may have had a bunch of stuff, but he is brought to a piece. He is lowered to only having bread. He could have had a mansion, but trying to pacify and to please this woman who is whorish. Who's looking for validation. Who's looking for esteem. Who's looking for the glitz and the glam. 
he will be brought to a piece of bread. Poverty. Poverty. And you see Samson lay, pursuing loving. The scripture says in verse four, I believe it is, that Samson loved Delilah. He loved, verse four says, and it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the Valley of Sore. So this didn't happen overnight. Samson continued, and that's why we warn our children. That's why in the book of the Song of Solomon, you, you, Solomon, you hear him hearing wisdom from his mother, hearing wisdom from his father about certain women to avoid. Today, we applaud, not we, because the thanks of God, Hopefully we see beyond the, the, the superficial. The world applauds adultery. The world applauds fornication. The world applauds sensuality. The world applauds uh, anything that is sensual that will, this, this scripture tells us that Delilah, who was a prostitute, she was a woman who was, who was uh, meeting the need of a man, but temporarily, but her needs were never met. So an opportunity or a proposal, as I call it, a proposal was given her that would change her, her, her economic situation, her, her status in the community. It would move her to a higher role wrong, so to speak. It would give her the uh, applause. She wouldn't be looked down upon or frowned upon by others because she now would have uh, financial stability and she wouldn't have to um, sell herself any longer. She was given a proposal by the rulers of her country. Let's look at that. So we, the, her name may have meant feeble, it meant weak, but it also, we understand that it wasn't that she was weak in the sense of physical. She was weak only in the sense that she did not have what others had. We don't know whether she grew up in a poor family and as that song says, didn't have much, but we ain't gonna talk about the Lord being good to her. But we understand that Delilah was uh, was willing to betray someone who loved her in order to get what would make her feel that she was um, had uh, purpose and validation. Let's be clear. People are looking for um, validation. They're looking for what makes me feel good. What changes the dynamics of my life? Now, this 11, I wanted to look this up. 1,100 pieces of silver. I got to, let me see. Um, is 3,000. This is a lot of money during these times. It may not be much to us. Um, but Hold on. I wonder, and I should pull this up on Blue Letter Bible so y'all can see what I'm doing. But she was going to have $17,000, which is a lot of money in her time. A lot of money. Change her entire outlook on life. Move her up to the higher, to the upper echelon. She was willing to do what was necessary for herself. She just was. She just was. Now let's look. Let's read on. And I got my notes over here too. <clears throat> so the script, let me read the rest of that scripture. Proverbs 6, 26. Uh, and the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. The word whorish here in Proverbs 6 means a person who commits fornication, adultery, or who is unfaithful to God. Whorish. The scripture refers to Israel who went a whoring after other gods. They were looking for, remember, they weren't content with the God who they couldn't see, but the God who moved for them. They wanted a God like other, they wanted a king like other kings. And this is this, what should I have said was king. They wanted a king like everybody else. Their king showed up. Their king moved for them. Their king intervened. Their king gave them victory. 
but they wanted a king like everybody else that they could see and go see. And God would say, if I give you a king like that, God loved them. He said, if I give you a king like that, he's going to take your children. He's going to take your stuff. He's going to, God told them what they were going to get. They said, fine, we'll give it to him. Sometimes you trade in the wrong thing. Sometimes you're trading the wrong thing. You should. So Delilah, let me stay on point. Good morning, Mother Fleming. We, we Sometimes we will trade what is valuable and producing in our lives for something that will produce nothing. Will produce nothing. So Delilah may mean feeble, but she wasn't powerless. She knew how. And the scripture tells us that uh, in verse 5. Verse 5 of this, this passage. And the lords of the Philistine came unto her. They needed her. So here you have her lack of uh, self-esteem, her need for validation, her need for affirmation, her wanting to feel important. And dear Lord, have mercy. We live in a generation where people want to feel important and that they matter. Beloved, let me just tell you, you matter. You matter because you're here. You're alive. You're breathing. You have purpose. They came up unto her. They all came together. Uh, there were five lords of, of the Philistines. They all came up and said unto her, entice him. Entice him. The word entice means to attract or tempt him by offering him pleasure. She knew how to do that. She was not powerless. She knew how to entice Samson. And there are people, beloved brothers and sisters, there are people who know how to entice you, who to attract you by offering what you think you're missing. I'm just trying to help you. I'm trying to help you today. I'm trying to help you. Married people or unmarried, the enemy <clears throat> will see that area of weakness and will put in your path someone to entice you, to entice you to try to attract you, to distract you from the will of God, the plan of God, the purpose of God, by wanting to give you what you think you need. Guard your heart. Guard your heart. Guard your heart. And sometimes we go looking for things. I, I put a post on my personal page the other day. And I talked about um, just because you can, and I probably should have did a video because it would have been clearer, but just because you can go buy 10 bottles of shampoo or whatever, doesn't mean you should. Because many of us possess the wherewithal, the financial ability uh, to go and do what we want to do. It doesn't mean you should. Because sometimes the reason we're purchasing or going shopping as what they call retail therapy. It ain't therapy. You feel good for a minute, but you still got the same issue. It didn't fix it. It didn't fix it. You still need to address that hole in your heart. You still need to address that unresolved issue. You still need to address that disappointment, that betrayal. You still need to address it. You going shopping and spending a thousand dollars, bringing it home and it's pretty, pretty and looks good and you put it up, it still doesn't resolve the issue. Just like the, the man who goes into the whorish woman, I don't care what her name is. I don't care how good she looks. 
I don't care how well she gyrates. I don't care how much money he spends on you. I don't care if he takes you to the coast every weekend or to Louisiana. He takes you to eat. He gets your nails done. He gets your lashes done. My Lord, today. He takes you shopping. It's still not worth it by means of a whorish woman or man. You will come to poverty. You will still come to poverty. Poverty of your spirit. Poverty. Right. Still depressed. Because he going back to do whatever he want to do. He's just lying or she's just deceiving you. All right. Let me. I'm trying to stay focused. Because sometimes we will pursue something or someone. Or we let ourselves be pursued by someone who doesn't always have our best interest at heart. Their name can be Delilah or David. I'm just trying to tell you the truth. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Let me come back to my point. So, and the Lord of the Philistines came to her and said, they didn't ask her to do something she could not do. They knew she could. She had to be a prominent prostitute. She wasn't making all the money, but she may have made the money. Let's say she made some money, but she was a prostitute and she never made that kind of money. So you have this woman who would be move her, her financial, her economic, her her uh, status in the community would change. She would, she would now be uh, able to buy the things she could not buy. She'd be able to go to the country club, let's just say. She'd be able to rent limos in our society, rent limos to travel. She'd be able to fly around uh, from, from city to city. She'd be able to go where she could not go before. It would change her life. Delilah, let's just talk about Delilah. He said, they said to her, entice him, tempt him by offering him pleasure. That was right up her alley. She was already doing that. She was already enticing him. And we need beloved people who love Jesus. The world will show you brothers, these naked women, and you'll try to emulate that at your house. We holy, beloved. You, your wife is yours. You don't have to look at all of that. I remember some decades ago when I was getting my hair braided and I bought a braid book. Those books are expensive. They were like, well, to me, they were expensive, like 10 bucks, I think. So in the book, I was looking for styles. And um, most of the styles for the women showed pictures. Well, it was a book for women about hair most of the women were this is a word were scantily clad they had very little clothes on so i ain't like y'all i sent them people an email i did i said i'm a woman and i bought this book for hairstyles and all i see is naked women i did and the man said to me about a book about hair for women with hairstyles. He says this, a book about hairstyles for women. He said, sex sales. I said, but I'm not trying to have sex with them. I want hairstyles. He said, man, we're just trying to make money. The world Jeremiah said, and I quote this often, my eyes affect my heart. So Samson loved this woman and what he saw impacted his heart so much that though she continually asked, what, where, where is your strength? How can you be, how can you be subdued? How can I make you less dominable? How can I take control of your life? He entertained it. And people who love God, 
I don't care if you're male or female. Don't you watch this stuff on these videos. Don't you watch this stuff on the online and expect to put that into practice in your home. Guard your heart. Your eyes will affect your heart. Keep it pure. You should, you should find pleasure in your wife's body. You should, not trying to emulate what you've seen and heard out there, but you should each be for the other. Sister, you ought not be looking at those brothers with a six pack and your husband got a barrel and you sitting here thinking, well, if he had a six pack, I'd want to be with him. Well, he's yours. The barrel and all. Love him. Y'all can hear me or not? Because a man is so much more than what the exterior is. A woman is so much more than the exterior. Now, that's all I'm going to say about being married, okay? All right, I'm done with that part, I think. So, because the world has tried to set our standards for what we're looking for. The world has tried to say what we should have. And I, when I watch commercials, I see it. They're trying to, to indoctrinate us. This will make you have fun. You buy this brand of this and you will have fun. You will be happy. If you buy this particular perfume, people will swoon to you. Y'all see those commercials? Don't you let the enemy lie to you. You should turn your heart to God so that you will find pleasure at your own house. And pray, if you're, you can't find pleasure there, ask the Lord for wisdom so you'll know what to do. That God will turn the heart of your spouse toward you. You should pray that just because they married you don't mean their heart's going to be there. You need to pray, God, turn my spouse's heart toward me. Let me, my heart be toward them. Let me not be harsh and cruel because you said I shouldn't be. You said I should love my wife as Christ loved the church and that the wife should submit and love her husband just like she she does the Lord. Okay. So let me get back to this. To entice him. You don't have to entice your spouse. Your spouse desires you. And if they start desiring something else, you need to pray and bind the devil and shut every door. Shut every door. Give no place to him. Give him no opportunity to creep into your house. By the internet, by television, by magazines, by anything. Guard your heart. Guard your eyes. Guard your ears. When you listen to some of this music, oh my gosh. It's just awful. It's just awful. And then we listen to it and then wonder why we're not finding pleasure at home. You done created something inside of you. What you hear becomes a part of you. Everybody's not going to marry Denzel. Denzel is married. Everybody's not going to marry Idris Elba. He, he, I think he got married. Everybody is not going to marry what people consider uh, wonderful. Uh, Beyonce, because she's, he, she's already married. Everybody is not going to marry Angela Bassett. She's already got a wonderful husband. What God wants for us is to love what he loves, period. Let's not have wandering eyes. Don't let the world set your standard. Don't be enticed. Don't be tempted. Tempting, being tempted, yes, but I don't want to spend every day being tempted because I don't want to control myself. The fruit, One of the fruit of the character of the spirit is self-control, temperance. And you don't want to manifest that in your life. You don't want to have control. You want to just go around looking willy-nilly at everybody and everything. Ain't no harm in looking. Yes, it is. Your eyes affect your heart. Your eyes affect your heart. Stop looking at everything. I know I do this when I watch movies. I know I'm grown. I'm almost 60. I am. But I ain't no fool. I will watch television and then they will bring some of these bedroom scenes on. 
I will close my eyes. I know we tell the children to do that, but I will close my eyes because I don't want my eyes to affect my heart. Stay holy, beloved. Y'all see my shirt? That's it. You got to love it so much. You're willing to close your eyes, shut your ears. I don't want to hear all that. I cringe when people use the name of Jesus uh, in their conversation without really meaning to call him. My little, one of my little great nephews, bless his heart, he's only four or five. And he was saying, and I guess he'd heard it or whatever at home. And he would say, oh my God. Oh my God. And I said, listen, listen, we don't want to say, oh my God. We want to say, oh my goodness. And I wasn't sure he understood. But the next time I heard him, he said, oh my goodness. Train up your children to honor God, to honor the name of the Lord. Now let me get back over here. Let me get back to the grown folk conversation. So Delilah was powerful. She knew how to tempt to entice. Elder Jones, some men come to church looking at the women and some women come to church looking at the men. Lord, help us all. And it ain't none of them looking for Jesus. <laughs> They're not looking for Jesus. You better come and get Jesus and fix yourself. Hallelujah. Let me get back to Delilah because, you know. All right. So um, y'all pray for me because, you know, I love Jesus. I do. I've had my own share of struggles, but I really do love the Lord. <laughs> I do. So I'm not, I just don't want you to fall prey, P-R-E-Y, uh, to the tactics of the enemy who comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Be holy at home, on your job, at Walmart. When the folk are naked at Walmart or Target or wherever you go, guard your heart. Guard your heart. Delilah is out there. David is out there. I don't know their names. I'm just saying. I know We know Delilah. Guard your heart. You ain't got to look at it. And you start talking about it. It's just a shame these folk just... Turn your head and just keep on praying, beloved. Now, so the Philistines wanted her to entice him. She knew how to do that. I'm going to say this and I'm going to get to the next one. We go to church looking for sexy. Sexy ain't at church, beloved. We ought not be sexy at church. I was talking to a brother friend of mine and I was talking about some, some clothes that I wanted to buy. And he was saying, well, you know, you could wear this size and it would fit. I said, but beloved, I'm, 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 I'm his God's woman. I can't be wearing clothes that are hugging everywhere. I don't want people to look at me. I need them to hear the word of God when I get up to speak. I'm not trying to have everything protruding. Sexy is at the house with your husband or your wife. It ought not be at church. Trying to show all your stuff and your six pack with your, and your, your, y'all know what I'm saying. I'm just saying, let's just, let's just love holiness. Let's just love Jesus. Let's just come looking for him. Let's don't go looking for Delilah and David. You're going to get a hold of something you can't let go. You're going to be like Samson. She going to enfeeble you <laughs> or he will enfeeble you. Make you weak. I was, um, I'm sorry. I'm going to say this. And I'm going to get back to this, I promise. I was um, listening to, uh, with, with a friend of mine. And we were listening to a, he was listening to a TikTok. Okay. And so this guy was talking about this woman that he was, he, he was, um, Seeing, and he was in the military. <laughs> and so y'all came to this class and I got about 20 more minutes, maybe 30. So y'all, you know, you can always sign off if this is not your cup of tea. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. I do. I love you. I do. But so this guy was on TikTok and he was saying, oh yeah, that's good, Brenda Harper. Yes, 
It's an entanglement. The devil is a lie. Listen, so this guy was on TikTok and he was saying that he was in the military and he had this girl that he loved back home and she was cheating on him. So he came back and he was working two jobs trying to, you know, get done what she wanted and she still cheated on him. And he said, uh, after three months, he caught a revelation. And the guy who I was listening to it with said, it took you three months to catch a revelation that she was cheating on you? <laughs> it's not funny, but it's true. Because we sit here and think, well, they weren't married. Let's be clear. They were not married. But he was doing everything he could to try to please her. Well, her name was Delilah. She wasn't looking for that. You were not her cup of tea, buddy. You were supplying what she wanted for temporary, but she wanted everything else too. When a person does not want you, you need to be honest about what you see. Don't try to, you know, they just going through a little rough patch. Rough patch on your own. Y'all know, people who know me, yeah, they just have to pray for me. Because, you know, um, I have this thing about having that gift of goodbye. And um, the Lord is helping me, okay? He's helping me. He's helping me. He's helping me. Yes. All right, so let's just trust the Lord, beloved, who loved Jesus. All right, so she enticed him. There's something about enticement. And we don't know we be being tempted. You don't know this person is trying to draw you away from Jesus. Your walk with God. They're trying to pull you. The devil wants you to start imagining. And that's why the scripture says to bring into captivity every thought, every thought. To the, to the, bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. What's that? To the word of God. Let those things that are contrary to the word of God, lock them up. You start seeing stuff and you'll start imagining. You'll start wondering. What would it be like? Lord, wash my mind. Wash me over again. Wash me over again by the power of your word. Wash me, Phyllis Marie. Uh, so we should want the Lord to wash us. So our minds won't be all sorts of wopsided and filled with all sorts of lust. Lust isn't always sexual, but lust is desiring something so much that we are willing to disobey God in order to get it. That's the working definition. I mean, it's not the all, it's not the only, but it's the one I've got. I stole it from my pastor some 30 years ago, but it's a good definition. Lust is desiring something so much that we will, we are willing. That's a hard thing to disobey God in order to get it. So the Philistine said to her in verse five, I'm sorry, y'all pray for me. Entice him, number one. Entice him. This is the proposal. I may not finish this today, but we have Monday to continue, Lord willing. The proposal, entice him, tempt him. Use your skill set to get you this money. Use your skill set to get us what we need. Entice him. Second thing that they ask her to do, see where his strength lies. Listen. This was the enemy admitting that Samson had great strength. Here's my truth I got from this, okay? Your enemy sees your greatness, even if you don't. The enemy will devise a plan for your demise. Your destruction. To keep you running around in circles rather than moving forward with God. The, another thing to see where his great strength lies. You're stronger than you know, because the scripture says, let the weak say, not say I'm weak. 
Let the weak say, not I'm struggling and straining, trying to make heaven my home. I'm broke as a joke. My money is funny. He didn't say the weak should say any of that. He said, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich because of what the Lord has done. What did he do? He made the, 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 the weak, he made them strong. He made the poor, he made them rich. He made the sick, he made them whole. His, to see where his great strength lies, you have greater in you. Don't get distracted. Don't get distracted. Don't get distracted. Listen to me, my young single, my mature single sisters and brothers. Don't get distracted. If it's from God, it'll wait. It'll wait. It'll keep. But if they're pulling you away from what you know to be right, Be honest about what you see. Even if you choose to stay there, be honest about what you see. Be honest about, I was seeing somebody some years back. I wrote down all my red flags, all the things that concern me because I have a tendency to forget and move on and love them and move. And that's just, you know, I don't think you should count wrong, but I wasn't married. So I needed to know these are issues for me. These are issues for me. I don't know why I'm talking about relationships today. Maybe because it's Samson and Delilah. Samson and Delilah. They were a couple. This was not a one-time visit. Samson loved her, which meant he had spent many, many, many days with her. It must have been something that other people knew for the Philistine lords to even come to her. It must have been something that everybody knew because they came to her to do what you do. Entice him. Use your enticement to get you some money. Use your enticement to get us what we need. You have greater in you. Don't get distracted the last one the enemy sees you but he don't know how you keep going strong he de devised a plan that he knew should have worked you were depressed for six months a year three years. You came home, you didn't take a bath, you would go straight to bed. You were, you were struggling to keep it together. The enemy said, I know this gonna work. I, I'm gonna attack their bodies. They don't want to exercise. They don't want to do the things they need to do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure they don't ever get up. Make sure they never rise above. Make sure they never accomplish what God planned for them. I'm going to keep them distracted with their body, distracted with their mental stability, distracted with their relationship, distracted trying to please everybody, distracted from trying to please God. I just want to please Jesus and all I say and do. I just want to please Jesus. How about you? I just want to hear him say, good and faithful servant, well done. All right. That's what I want to hear. And I want to follow him with my whole heart. I don't want to be distracted. I don't want nothing he don't want for me. And for me, that's a mouthful to say. But it's my, it's what I believe. I don't want nothing he don't want for me. My name ain't on it. I don't want that. 
Mm -mm. You don't want me? I don't want that. Let me get to this. The enemy sees you. He sees the potential in you. And he wants you to be distracted, making bad decisions. Wants you to be distracted, looking at everybody else. Trying to do what everybody else is doing. Trying to do what, how, how they, listen. You better love God and love your spouse, love your children and get to church and hear the word of God so you can be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. You better read your Bible and stop listening to all these naysayers around you, setting your setting where you should go, trying to be like everybody else. Be like Jesus. I'm not saying you should. There's some styles that are beautiful. I'm not saying, you do, You know, you got to look like your great grandmama. You know, you don't have to dress like you don't have to. You don't, I'm not saying any of that. I'm just saying you need to guard your heart and your mind. Don't let the world set your standards. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Be careful because when we start sliding, y'all know I got to give an example, right? Let me see if I can find something over here. To give an example. Okay, before I cut something else off. Oh, here. Oh, let's do this. This is colored. You can see this, I think. Remember, you want to be right smack dab in the middle so you can stand strong. Let me turn that around so y'all don't see all that. So you can stand strong in the Lord. You don't want to get close to the edge so you can fall off. Let's not get close to the edge. Let's be strong in the Lord. Let's be strong in him. Let's not allow our temptations to draw us away from God. A man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust. That's New Testament and enticed. Drawn away of his own lust and enticed. He makes me feel important. He makes me feel good. He he always said the right thing. She always said the right words. Does she love Jesus? I remember asking a young woman that some 20 years ago when they were dating somebody who'd been in the church all their lives. I said, well, is he saved? Well, well, there's no well. There's, there's no well. That's yes. No, but are they saved? Do they love Jesus? Yes or no? Does their lifestyle demonstrate they love Jesus? Not just what they do at church, when they're at the house with you. Do they love Jesus? Do they love him? Are they repentant when they do wrong? Do they want to please the Lord above all else? Samson wasn't asking Delilah all these questions because they didn't have that, but he knew what she was. Let's read on. The third thing that the, the, that the Philistines wanted was they wanted her to find out by what means we may prevail against him. What means we may prevail against him, and this is our purpose, that we may bind him to afflict him. And we will give you, every one of us, 1,100 pieces of silver. That came up to about $13,000. She was going to be wealthy. There are those who will sell you out to get something that they believe satisfies a part of them. When you... When you, when you find somebody you want to be with, yes, they do fulfill a part of you. I'm not saying they shouldn't. They should. But nobody is God but God. So, you have verse 6. And I'm going to probably stop. Well, I have time to finish each of these. I'll be quick. Verse 6, verse 10, and verse 13. Oh my gosh, Roberta Ingram, absolutely. Everybody in church ain't saved. Everybody in church ain't mature either. Everybody in church ain't for you. I know y'all find that hard to believe. And everybody speaking in tongues ain't for you either. Everybody rolling on the floor ain't for you either. Okay. Let me get back to my lesson. So, um, 
verse 6, verse 10, and verse 13. Each describe different times Delilah is, has done what she does and she is trying to get the information she needs to get her bag. She's trying to secure her bag. That's that money. The love of money is the root. It's not money. Money ain't the problem. I know y'all say that. Some of y'all mess up that scripture. But the Bible said the love of money is the root of all evil. Look at this mess we got with these vaccines. They wanted that money. They're not trying to find a cure for some of these things because they make these medicines so outrageously priced. It's money. This opioid epidemic that they have, epidemic, whatever they call it, it's because those people who are in the upper echelon on the boards, they loved money. They didn't care that they were killing uh, people were overdosing and killing themselves. They didn't care about that. They weren't trying to find solutions. It's the love of money. When I listen at some people, um, uh, I was a friend of mine again was showing me something on TikTok and this guy was talking about money. And um, I, I, I'm fine with money. I, we all need money, but money ought not control our lives. So, and he was talking about um, money and I, and I said, that's not true because the Bible didn't agree with it. It's not true. What, you, what he's saying is not true. He was saying, you need to be selfish. You need to be concerned about yourself and you need to get your money and you need to, and I just thought, he don't tithe. He don't give offerings. He's not sowing into the kingdom of God. There, when he started talking, the scripture came to my mind that said something about the babbling of fools. We can't dismiss everybody, but you need to know when people are ungodly and what they're saying, though it sounds like it might be right, it is unscriptural. It is devilish. Delilah, let me get back to my lesson. Y'all, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Delilah starts in verse six. Tell me, I pray thee, wherein thy great strength lieth and wherewith thou mightest be bound to afflict thee. And I said this during the week on Grace for Today. Samson loved Delilah because she filled some part of him. She did not love him. And so, um, Samson begins telling her things so she will stop talking and asking him. Let's read on. I'm going to read this to you. And Samson said unto her, if they bind me with seven green withs that were never dried, ropes or cords, uh, that were never dried. Then shall I be weak and be as another man. Then the Lord of the Philistines brought up to her seven green withs, which had not been dried, and she bound him with them. She did it. Now there were men lying in wait, abiding with her in the chamber. She was in her bedroom. And those men were there waiting to capture Samson. And she said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he brake the wits as a thread of tow is broken when it toucheth the fire. So his strength was not known. It didn't work. It didn't work. Verse 10. And Delilah said unto Samson, Behold, thou hast mocked me and told me lies. Now tell me, I pray thee, wherewith thou mightest be bound. Now why would she need to know the secret? And he said unto her, 
If they bind me fast with new ropes that never were occupied, then shall I be weak at and be as another man. Delilah therefore took new ropes and bound him therewith and said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And there were liars in wait, abiding in the chamber, and he brake them off his arm like a thread. Verse 13. And Samson said unto her, Hitherto thou hast mocked me, told me lies. Tell me wherewith thou mightest be bound. She said, you are keeping me from getting my money. You're holding up my bag. I'm trying to secure my bag. I can't get it until I get an answer. The right answer. He said unto her, if thou weavest the seven locks of my head with the web, and she fastened it with the pen, and with the pen, and said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awaked out of his sleep. He was asleep with Delilah all these times. And he got up and went away with the pen of the beam and with the web. This was a big thing. And she had weaved his hair into it. And he still wasn't weakened. I'm not going to continue this because I want to pick this up on Monday so that we can start together. But I want to read verse 15 just for good measure because she is using her enticement, her ability to manipulate someone who loves him, loves her to get what she wants here. And she said unto him, verse 15, I didn't put this on there, but how canst thou say, I love thee when thine heart is not with me? You know what that means? It means if you say you love me, you would tell me your secret. If you love me, you will open your heart to me. You won't withhold from me this thing. So she understood what love was. Even if she never loved him back, she knew what it was. Thou hast mocked me these three times and hast not told me wherein thy great strength lieth. Verse 16, the scripture says, I'm going to stop here. And it came to pass, which means in the process of time, this went on for some time, over and over. When she pressed him daily with her words and urged him, verse 16 says, so that his soul was vexed unto death. He was sick of her asking him. Sick of her saying, tell me, you say you love me and you've heard people, you've heard people, I've heard people say that. You say you love me, why you won't get me such and such? You say you love me, why you won't do this, that, and the other? And sometimes that may be needful, but this was not the time. She didn't love him back. She had not demonstrated a love for Samson. She loved money. Delilah, that's her name. Delilah. You see and know in our economy, there are people who will manipulate vulnerable women to get their money. They will try to win their trust. And once they win that trust, they then go in for the kill. They want access to your world because they love you so much. Delilah. They meet your every need. You call, they come because they're building something to steal from you. Now don't miss the good women. Don't miss the good men. She was looking right, Roberta Ingram. She was looking to gain, to profit from his uh, failure. To, to profit 
from his destruction. You talk about sleeping with the enemy. Her desire was not to benefit Samson. It was to benefit herself. It had nothing to do with love. But she enticed him, manipulated him for her benefit. Delilah. Typically for life class, I give you um, a prayer that we're going to pray. And I, I wrote this down for you and it's simple. And, and maybe I'll pop it in here. Let's see. Um, oh, let's go to life class. All right. Um, I want to pop this in here for you so that you can have it. And uh, this is what I would pray. And a simple prayer doesn't... I don't believe God requires sometimes when we're, it's our own personal thing, um, that we do long, lengthy prayers. Peter prayed. He said, Lord, help me. He said, Lord, save me when he was sinking. He didn't pray a long prayer. He said, Lord, save me. He didn't even try to describe his predicament. He just said, Lord, save me. And no matter what you say about Peter, of all the disciples, Peter was the only one who walked on water. Don't get distracted, beloved. Here's my prayer so that you can see it. You don't have to pray that. But this is what I would pray after a lesson for today. Father, I simply ask that you empower me to follow you, your plan and your will. Empower me to obey you and your word in every way. Sometimes we don't, we try to, we don't know all the ramifications. We don't see everything that's on the horizon. But Lord, we should, what we should pray is, Lord, let your will be done in me. Let your will be done in me. I don't know everything. I just know that you love me and you have your best, you have my best interest at heart. That's it. I don't know how it's going to work. I just trust you with my heart, with my life, with my next. And every Delilah and David that appears, that comes to steal, they may not even know it. They may not understand it. But we should pray, Lord, let your will be done. I see your prayer request. We should certainly pursue God. We've been talking about uh, being indomitable, unable to, unable to be defeated. Delilah was not a weak woman. She knew where her strength was. It was an enticing Samson. And that opened a door for her to change the dynamics of her life. Be careful, people of God. That we don't fall prey, P-R-E-Y, to the tactics of others who have a different agenda than the will of the Lord. All right, my time is gone. I'm going to upload this to YouTube shortly. Thank you all so much for joining me this morning. And... Um, Third Saturday, every month, Lord willing, we will have life class. And typically, I, I could have shared a screen. Um, and I'll be glad to send the notes to whomever may need them. But you can inbox me for that. But I just just really want us to be aware. To The scripture says we should not be ignorant of Satan's devices. The Lord has good in store for us. He says, if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. 
So, right, if we continue to pursue God, Sister Cassie says, uh, we, will, we will outrun many things that are trying to overtake us. Pursue God. Pursue God. You say, I don't know how, Sister Edna. Well, beloved, pick up your Bible and just start reading. Read the epistles. Read the read Romans. Just read Psalm, Proverbs, Ephesians. Read the epistles, Ephesians, uh, 1 Peter, 2 Peter. Read, read the Bible. And let the Lord begin to build you up. Ask him for wisdom. Go to a Bible teaching church. That teaches the word. Not necessarily what makes you feel good but that you can grow in grace and in knowledge. Hear the word and be healed. My time is gone. I've been an hour. I'm so glad for this. I enjoy. God bless you, Sister Patricia. I just, um, I just want to be found faithful. And uh, thank you all for helping me to do that. Those of you who sow into grace for today, those of you who send me words of encouragement, those who buy my book, thank you for that. Um, and it's encouraging. There are things I need to be doing. Y'all pray my strength. But let's pray now. Let's pray for those who've had prayer requests that I've seen. And if I miss some, some of the other prayer warriors on here will pray for you. But let's pray. Let's believe God to turn things around for others. Let's pray what we want to happen in our own lives. Let's believe God to be our healer. Father, this is the day that you've made and we are grateful for your blessings that chase us down and overtake us. We thank you for being the faithful God that you are. Lord, help us not to be ignorant of Satan's devices, his plots, plans, and ploys. Let them come to nothing. Help us to chase after you and your will, your way and your word. Order our steps. Every man, every woman, give us grace to receive strength to accomplish your plan and your will. Let your will be done in us. Let your glory, oh God, help let the weak say, I am strong. The greater one is in me. Your hand is upon me for good. Father, we thank you. For that man that asked for his wife to return home, give him wisdom, give favor, show him what to do, give him peace. Father, we ask you now that you would let your will be done. Turn things around. Father, those who are listening to me who need you to intervene in their lives, God, show yourself strong and mighty. Move on their behalf. Give them wisdom. Lord, where the enemy has tried to come in like a flood, let the Spirit of God raise up a standard against him, against the plans of the enemy. Father, I thank you that no weapon formed against us will prosper. It will not produce what the enemy intended. Father, I thank you so much that your word is working in us even now. Your word is working in us right now. Your word is working in us. Every man, every woman, every husband, every wife. Turn the hearts of the woman, of the, of the wife to her husband. Turn the heart of the husband to her, his wife. Father, let them be each for the other. We bind the enemy who comes to rear his head, to bring division in their home, to bring, uh, to steal their peace. Let them be, be producers. Let them be producers for the kingdom of God. Father, open their eyes to see. I thank you that no weapon formed against that marriage, no weapon formed against that relationship will work. Father, we don't want anything you don't want, but God, where if you, this is what you've ordained for us, give us grace to receive it. Let the peace of God that passes all understanding garrison and guard our hearts and our minds. Heal us, that we will not spew out bitterness and hate. Heal us, that we won't be saying derogatory things that say, I'm not healed. Lord, heal us from the inside. Heal us from the inside. Heal us of those words spoken to us in our past. Heal us of those definitions that those who hated us spoke over us. Heal us, that we will not believe the lies of the enemy. Heal us from the inside out, dear God. 
that we can accomplish what you've called us to. Heal us that we won't be longing for those things that we found in Egypt. Heal us. Mm. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Bless your great name, dear Lord. I hear you. Oh, God, help me to accomplish the things I should, that your people will be blessed. Help me, dear God. Give me the help. Give me the Phoebe that I need, dear God. Give me the Timothy that I need to accomplish the things of the kingdom of God. Father, I thank you now. I believe it and I receive it done. Father, I pray for your sons and daughters. Help them to grow, to mature. Oh God, increase their faith. Give them strength they didn't know they had. Father, every one of them listening, I thank you, Lord God, that your hand is upon them for good. That the weapon that has been formed against them will produce nothing. We uproot it in the name of Jesus. We uproot it and we cast it aside. Bring healing to their lives. The grief, let it lift. Heal. Father, I thank you that you open doors before us that no man can close. Hallelujah. Bring into our lives good, godly relationships. Bring into our lives healing and wholeness, dear God, that we can receive good. Bring into our lives the financial stability that we need, Lord, the streams of income that we need, Father. Father, your thoughts concerning us are good and not evil to give us hope and an expected end. Cover us now. And Lord, anything that's not like you, sanctify us. Take it out. Purify our hearts, purify our motives, help us to discern and to see beyond the surface. Give us peace and joy in believing. Father, we thank you for it. Father, we thank you for it. We thank you for it. We thank you for it. We thank you for fulfilling your will. We thank you for working in us both to will and to do of your good pleasure. Father, we thank you that you are working it out for our good. And we'll honor you and we'll give you praise for it. In the mighty and the matchless name of Jesus, we decree and declare that it is so. In the name of Jesus, amen. God bless you. I didn't yell at y'all for an hour. <laughs> Listen, I pray the word of God's blessed you. If it has, would you please share the video? Type in catch the replay. Hashtag grace for today. Hashtag capital L-I-F-E class, life class. Live in faith every day, people of God. Live and cry if you have to. When you get through crying, wipe your face, get up and let's stay with God. He is the only one who remains faithful. He is the faithful God. All right, I got to go. Hey, I'll be leading worship tomorrow at my church. If you get a chance, it's at 10 a.m. Central Time. Catch us live on Tabernacle of Prayer. And uh, the Word of God's going to be good. I'm just going to say we've been seeking the Lord, but I know the Word's going to be powerful. We've been talking about engage and taking territory. Amen, amen, and amen again. All right, y'all share the video. Um, I'll upload this to YouTube shortly. For those of you who share from YouTube, please subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. We'd like to get those numbers up. And I still tell you, you don't always know what Facebook's going to do. They keep on changing stuff. But subscribe to our YouTube channel. God bless you all. I appreciate that encouragement. And um, subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can get the notifications for there as well. We'll upload this shortly. I hope that you will join me on Monday morning, Lord willing, at 7.15 a.m. Central Time as we continue to talk about being indomitable. We're talking about Samson. I got another person to talk about too. So I need to finish Sam so we'll get to the next one. But I pray the word of God's bless you. Y'all pray for me. My name is Edna Gray Jameson. All right. So until then, remember this. Time spent in the word of God is never wasted. And you have been graced for today. Have a great day, everybody. Have a good weekend. Peace.